Pellet IoT University welcomes you to the video tutorials of the IoT portal. In this tutorial from the Tellit IoT University, we'll explore using the DeviceWise local database. One of the features of the DeviceWise Workbench software that you may not be familiar with is the built-in local database. The database uses an embedded SQL Lite engine and provides a lightweight database that can be used by the application logic of your triggers for a variety of tasks, such as temporary storage of data, lookup tables, or long-term collection of data. Today we're going to create four triggers to interact with the local database. One will write values into the table, one will count the number of rows added, one will delete only records that meet certain criteria. And the final trigger will export the table to a staging browser as a CSV file and delete the records from the table. Using the local database is as easy as creating a new table. We'll call ours tutorial. And creating the columns. So we'll start with random one. We'll make that an integer. Our second column will be random two, also an integer. And our final column will be a time value. So I'll call that time and our data type will be a timestamp. Now that we have our table and our columns, we can create the trigger that will write random numbers into the database by way of a local variable. So I have a project created. I'm going to create a new trigger. And I'm going to call it Write to Database. It's going to be a scheduled trigger and it's going to run every two seconds. Since I can't write directly from the random number generator to the local database, I'm going to create local variables to hold those values. I'm going to start with rand1. I'm going to make that an int4. And rand2, also an int4. For my time value, I'm going to call it time. And the type is going to be a timestamp. So at this point, I've got my local database set up with a table and columns. I've got my trigger started with local variables. Now we'll use the random number generator to write values to those fields. My first one I'm going to have random numbers between the range of 0 and 30 and the output of the random number generator is going to be a local variable called rand1. My second local variable is going to be between 80 and 100 and is going to be stored in RAND2. For my time value, I'm going to use from the date and time section, get date and time. I'm going to use the local time zone and the output of this is going to go to my local variable for time. To map this data into the local database, under the local database section, I'm going to use local database insert. I'm going to select my tutorial table and now I can map my random number to the field in the table. Same thing with my random two. And the same thing with my time. To complete this, I'll use an end execution success. And this concludes my trigger. I'll save it. close the editor, and start to trigger. As always, I'm looking for successes. 
a quick refresh of the screen shows me that I am getting successful executions of this trigger. So let's go view our data. Back to the local database, back to the tutorial table, and I refresh it. I can see I have in random one, I have random numbers between 0 and 30. And in random two, I have values between 80 and 100, along with a timestamp. Local database inserts, probably the most popular of the local database functions, but there are several others we're going to look at today that are also very powerful. Our next trigger is going to be used to count the rows in the local database. Again, this is going to be a scheduled trigger. I'm going to run it every two seconds. And the function for that under local database is local DB count. All I have to do here is select the table and tell it where I want this value written to. So we can monitor it. I'm going to write this out to a global variable called db count and close this an end execution success i'll save the trigger close the editor and start the trigger and look for successes so i've got two successes so far so now let's take a look at the global variable db count and you can see I have 109 now 110 if I choose to watch this value it'll refresh every second and every other second it should increase by one so at this point I'm using a trigger to write a random number into a local variable then I'm publishing that local variable into the local database we could further refine this trigger by telling it to count only certain values so I'm doing the local database count so now I'm going to only count the values where random2 is greater than 95. If you remember, the range for this is 80 to 100. So about 20% of the values, 25%, should be over 95. And save this. Now when we put a watch on that variable, it should go up much slower. It'll only go up when it produces a value over 95. For our third trigger today, we're going to delete any row from the local database where random one is below 10 and random2 is over 90. So we'll create a new trigger. We'll call this delete when conditions are met. I'm going to make this an on-demand trigger so I can fire it whenever I want to. The command for this is local db delete. I'm going to select my tutorial table and here's where I set my conditions. My condition is going to be random one less than 10 and random two greater than 90. I'm doing that because if these values are in that range, everything is normal. They're of no value to me. 
and I, there's no need to store them. So we can see how many rows have been deleted. I'm going to send that information to another global variable called rows deleted. And an end execution success. Save this, close the editor, and I'm going to start this trigger. But before I do it, I want to bring up the variables tab and do a watch on rows deleted. And you can see right now there are zero rows deleted. When I go back to my local database trigger, fire this on-demand trigger, look for a success, there it is, back to my watch, and you can see I deleted 45 rows that met that criteria. For our final trigger today, we'll create a trigger that writes the table out to the staging area as a CSV file and then deletes all the records in the table. So back to my local database project, a new trigger, I'm going to call this export and delete. This is also going to be an on-demand trigger. And the function I'm going to use for this is in the staging file system, local DB export. So here I'm going to put in the file name. I'm going to call this local db.csv. The table I'm going to pull it from is tutorial. My first row is a header, so I'm going to leave this set to true. And I am going to delete the exported rows so that my new export or my next export will only contain unique values. End execution success. And save this. So let's take a quick look at the staging browser. So you can see there is no local DB export file here. And let's take a look at the database. So you can see that there are records in the table to be exported. So back to the trigger. I'm going to start the trigger. And now I'm going to fire the trigger. Again, I'm looking for a success. I got it. So now if I take a look at the global variable for my row count, you can see it's down to zero. And if I take a look at the staging browser and refresh this, you can see I have a local db.csv file exported, well, today. So in a future tutorial, we'll take a much closer look at the staging browser. This is an incredibly powerful feature of the DeviceWise Workbench uh, that if you're not using, you probably should be.